Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to cover another way to open a secret wall. This time around, we're going to do it with an object such as a key. What you can do with this is you can have the key somewhere in the game and the player has to find it. Once the player finds the key, then they can use it to open up the wall. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Just in case you haven't seen the other videos, I'm just going to quickly go through and show you how we have it set up so far. So we have a wall that's composed of three different sections. The middle section is the most important. We renamed that one to wall. We also made sure it was anchored and that it didn't have any welds inside of it. We also included an invisible part in front of the wall itself. And that's what we're going to use to check to see if the player has the key in their hand. And then for the key itself, I just grabbed this one from the toolbox. The one that I used is from the key and door. So I just inserted that into the game. And then I deleted the door part and just kept the key. If you want to use another key or make your own, that's completely fine. Just be aware with your key, you want to make sure that it says key for the tool name and also that it has a part named handle. Also, inside of the handle part, you want to make sure there's no weld. Otherwise, when you try to pick it up, you'll stick to the ground. Now, moving on to the script, I have the script inside of the invisible part in front of the wall. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this first line right up here is a reference for the part itself. The second line is a reference for the wall, this middle piece right here. We also have a variable called can open, which we're setting to true at the beginning. Our function takes in a parameter called other part, and then we're saying other part dot parent to find the player model. Then we're checking the player model to see if it has a humanoid part. If it finds a humanoid part and can open is true, then what it's going to do, it's going to take the player's name and locate that player model inside of the workspace. If it's able to do that, then what it's going to do next, it's going to check the player and see if they have the key inside of the model. If that's true, then we're going to set can open to false. We're going to set the wall transparency to one to make it invisible. And then we're going to set the can collide property to false so that the player can walk through it. At first, we're going to just destroy this key, but later on in the video, we'll take a look and see how we can teleport it to a new location. And at the very bottom, we're just saying part.touch colon connect. And what this is doing, whenever the player touches this part, it's going to run the function that we wrote right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and take another look and see what it does. All right, so right now my player can pick up this key. And then whenever he gets close to the wall and touches that invisible part right here, it's going to take the key and open up the wall. If you want to change it up a little bit where the key teleports to a new position and the wall closes back up, let's go and take a look at the script and see how we can do that. To update the script so that it teleports the key instead of destroying it, the first thing you want to do is get rid of the line that said key colon destroy. And then we're going to update it with a few more lines of code. We're going to start with this line right here. So this is making a variable as a reference for the key. Next, we're setting its parent back to game.workspace. Next, we're setting the key's handle position equal to a new vector. For this vector, we're setting the x and the z position equal to a random number. For the y position, we're just setting that equal to 5 so that it spawns somewhere above the base plate. After that, we're going to wait 2 seconds. And then we're going to set the wall's transparency back to 0 so that it becomes visible again. After that, we're going to set the wall's can collide property back to true so the player can't walk through it anymore. And finally, we're going to set can open back to true so that the player can find the key and reopen the wall. So let's go ahead and run the script and check it out. Okay, so I'm going to collect the key. I'll open the wall. And now the key has spawned to a new location right over here. Another thing you can do is be more specific with your random numbers. So for example, if you want to set up multiple walls in your game, and after the player opens up the first wall, you would want the key to spawn somewhere in the second area. You can do that by taking a look at the position of the wall parts. So this one for the Z position starts at negative 0.5. And this one is located at negative 73. So for this key here, we would want it to spawn for the Z position somewhere between probably like negative 10 and negative 60. So let me go ahead and show you how to add this to the script. We're going to modify the script that's inside the invisible part in front of the wall. So let's go ahead and open that up. And what we want to change is the random part for the Z position. And we want it to choose a random number between negative 60 and negative 10. 
And then as far as the game itself goes, there's a couple things you'll have to change. So for the second wall, you want to update this one to say wall 2. And then so on, so the next one would be wall 3. And the reason we need to do that is because inside of the second script here, you'll need to update the local wall script to say game.workspace.wall2. And then if you're going to continue with this, then for each additional wall, you would just update the Z position to the new bounds. Okay, for now though, let's just go ahead and check it out and see if when I pick up the key and open up the wall, it spawns somewhere in between the two walls. Okay, let me go ahead and collect the key. And now I'll open up the wall. And let's see. So there it is over here. So it spawned in between the two walls. If you want to set the X position as well, you can do that. So this wall goes in between an X position of negative 5 and 24. So inside of your script here, what you can do is for the random part, you can say choose a number between negative 5 and 24. Okay, let's try it out now. Okay, so I'll collect my key. I'll open up the wall. And now it spawns in between the two walls going up and down and also left to right. Alright, so this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.